electron arrangements and energy levels. Okay, so what we're going to talk about here is a way to organize electrons into orbitals uh, in atoms. And so basically this slide gives you an overview of what we're going to be doing, all the different things. So the first thing, uh, this is an orbital energy diagram. Okay, so you can see the 1s orbital is the lowest. 2s and 2p are the next shell in an atom. And together these hold eight electrons. The 1s can hold two electrons. Each individual orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. And notice that we go 2s, 2p, and then in the n equals 3 shell, now we've added d orbitals as well. So, um, so as a little example, I've added lithium. Now lithium has three electrons. And we know that because lithium has three protons, and if we have a neutral atom, it has to have the same number of electrons as protons. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill orbitals from lowest to highest, and we're going to put those two electrons in the lowest energy orbital, two of them, and then we have one left, and we're going to put it in the next highest um, orbital, which is the 2s. Now, when we get to this, writing the electron configuration, it's going to be 1s2, so 1s is the orbital, 2 superscript, that's the number of electrons in it, and then next is 2s, and then only one electron in it. The other way that we can write this, and we'll see this a little bit later, is we can write the configuration for the noble gas, so write the noble gas atomic symbol in, or elemental symbol in uh, square brackets, and then um, the, essentially, the valence the leftover after that. Okay, so let's go to the next slide and just talk a little bit about orbital filling. So we just did on that slide, but let's make it a little bit more official. So electrons fill atomic orbitals and they fill them from lowest to highest energy. Now, as I mentioned, s orbitals at any n are the lowest energy. Each s orbital can hold two electrons. The set of three p orbitals are the next lowest in energy, and that's at any n. So n equals 1, n equals 2. So p orbitals are higher in energy than s orbitals, uh, but they're, we're going to see they're lower in energy than d orbitals. And each p orbital can hold two electrons, and there's three of them. So basically, we can put six electrons into those p orbitals. Now the next one, d orbitals, those are higher in energy than both s and p, and there are five d orbitals in one set. And we already know that each orbital of any kind can hold two electrons, so, ten, uh, so five times two is ten, and we can put ten electrons in that set of five d orbitals. Now, we're not going to be filling f orbitals in this class, so um, here's a little bit of the information just in case you're curious. And that f orbitals are even higher in energy than d orbitals. There are seven of them. We can put 14 electrons total into those f orbitals. But again, we're not going to be uh, filling f orbitals in this course. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to learn to use the periodic table to write these electron arrangements and configurations. And it's a lot easier that way because basically the periodic table is a road map for orbital filling. And that's the way that we want to think about it. Now, as I mentioned before, we're going to assume that the atom is neutral. And so that means there's the same number of electrons as protons. And the atomic number gives us the number of protons, as we learned earlier. Okay, so here's the periodic table, you know, kind of to get you oriented. Now, this area right here, that is called the S block. And so basically, when we're traveling through this part of the periodic table, we are filling the S orbital. Now notice I have n equals 1 for the very top row, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5, and so forth. Now that is the shell. Okay, so that is the shell or the um, quantum number n, which represents the energy. So n equals 1 is the lowest energy. It can hold two total electrons because it only has a 1s orbital. Okay, we saw that in that orbital energy diagram earlier. 
um, n equals 2 is um, the next highest. And so we have s orbital, and then this is the first time we have a p orbital. Okay? n equals 3, we have a 3s orbital, as we saw on our diagram. We have a 3p orbital, and then we also have 3d. Okay, now notice it's in the next row down. So you got to watch out for that. Okay, so let me uh, finish talking about these blocks. So the S block, this is where we're filling the, um, the S orbital. So if we were to write an electron configuration for calcium, the last entry in that electron configuration would be 4S2, one, two electrons in it. Okay, the D block, this is where the last orbital we're filling is the d orbital, okay? So for instance, for titanium, we would be filling a 3d orbital and it would have two electrons in it. I should say we would be filling the set of 3d orbitals and it would have two electrons in it. The p block, similarly, so we're filling the p orbitals in this block, okay? So for instance, for carbon, um, we would have 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, 1, 2, okay? So you can kind of see how you can count that. It's kind of cool. It makes it really easy to write electron configurations this way. Okay, so a lot of this I already said, but I just want you to have it in writing. So the names of the blocks on the periodic table, that refers to the orbital that's being filled and n is the energy level or shell being filled, okay? So that's the number in front of the orbital letter that uh, we're talking about. So, um, and another thing to keep in mind is the lower the n, the lower the energy. So a 1s orbital is lower in, ener in energy than a 2s orbital. A 3p uh, orbital is higher in energy than a 2p. 3d orbitals are lower in energy than 4d orbitals. Okay, so N, it gives you the relative energy compared to others, and it's also the shell. Okay, all right, now, I, again, a lot of this I already said. So for the same N, um, S orbitals are the lowest in energy. Okay, we saw that on our orbital energy diagram, and that's compared to P and D orbitals. Now, um, assuming the same N again, D orbitals are actually higher in energy than both P and S orbitals. So basically it goes S, P, D, with D being highest and S being lowest. Um, so just a few examples, 2S orbitals are lower in energy than 2P. Notice we have the same N, but S versus P. P orbitals are higher in energy. 3S versus 3P, again, same thing. Um, the s orbitals are lower in energy than the p orbitals, and notice it doesn't matter the quantum number. So we have 3 and 3, but the s's are lower than the p's. 3d's are going to be higher in energy than 3p's, okay? Um, so d orbitals are higher in energy than p orbitals. Okay, so now let's, let's go ahead and start using our little roadmap. Um, and so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to show you basically how to use the periodic table just to fill electrons. And so the idea is to start at hydrogen and fill orbitals going across the periodic table till you get to your goal. Okay, so fluorine is going to be our goal for this example. Okay, so this is the 1s, so we're going to fill 1s1, 1s2. Okay, that one's full. Now we're done. Now let's go to the next shell. So this would be n equals 2. So these would be the 2s's. 2s1, 2s2. Okay, so our electron configuration so far would be 1s2, 2s2. Okay, now we're going to go to the 2p's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 2p5. Okay, so our total electron configuration is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Okay, so let's go to the next slide and it'll show you kind of continuing on. So there's the 2s, just as I mentioned. Click on again. 
and we end up at the 2p, okay? So 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. Now, um, in some of the homework, it's going to ask you how many electrons are going into particular shells. So the n equals 1 shell can hold 2 electrons. The n equals 2 shell can hold a total of 8 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay? So, again, so I'll show you the electron configuration written out for fluorine, and we'll do an orbital energy diagram for fluorine uh, a little bit later in the presentation. But let's go ahead and continue. What if we were going past fluorine, okay? So we'd have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and let's say we wanted to stop at magnesium right here, okay? So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, okay? Let's do another imaginary example, okay? Let's go ahead and do silicon, which is right here, all right? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p12, okay? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2, okay? So finally, this is as far as we're going to go with this right now. Uh, then this is where you'd be filling the 4s. So after you filled all the way over um, to, uh, to argon over here, then you would begin on the n equals 4 row. Now, in this case, this is going to be 4s, and then we'll see on the next slide, the d orbitals right here, that's going to drop back an n, okay? So, okay, so let's go to the next slide. And we're going to see 3D. So see that? So we had 4S right here. And that's in the N equals 4 row. But it's going to be N minus 1 for the D orbitals. Okay? So, um, so that's just something to keep in mind as we move through the course. Now, 4S2, 3D10, 4Ps. These are the, so if we went all the way over here, that would be 4P6. Okay, so here is the orbital energy diagram that we talked about earlier. Now you have a little bit more context with the periodic table. So there's 1s, that's that very first row. Here's the whole second row, 2s and 2p. Here's the n equals 3. So remember, these two are going to be in the n equals 3 row, but this is going to actually be in the n equals 4 row, but we're going to drop back n minus 1 for the d orbitals. And then there's our 4s. So you can see it both ways. All right, so let's look at our fluorine again. Okay, so now we talked about filling it using the periodic table. So we're going to use an orbital energy diagram. We're going to put two electrons in the lowest orbital, which is the 1s. We're going to put two more in the next lowest energy orbital. And we're going to put the last five in the two p's and that is the next lowest energy orbital. So we always want to fill from lowest energy to highest energy when we're doing electron configurations. So the electron configuration, this is the way that we would write it. 1s2, right there. 2s2, right there. 2p5, right there. Okay? If we wanted to, we could take this core, so that's helium, and we could put brackets around helium, and then we could write out the remaining electron configuration for the valence electrons. So what this is nice for is it makes it really obvious how many valence electrons there are or how many outermost electrons there are in a given atom. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a look at these electron arrangements versus configurations. Now, in general chemistry, we don't use a lot of this electron arrangement idea but in introductory chemistry, we do. And so that's why I'm writing this two ways. So, um, so electron arrangements for fluorine. So this would be that 1s. So that's n equals 1. And what this is is all of the n equals 2 added together. So this would be 2s and the 2ps. And that's how we get 7 there. Okay, so you can think of it as shells. This is the n equals 1 shell. 
this is the n equals 2 shell. Okay, and so here's the electron configuration that corresponds with that. See, two electrons are in there, and then seven electrons are in these uh, n equals 2, both the s's and the p's. If we do the same thing for carbon, then here again, here's our inner shell, 1s2, and here are all the electrons that are in the uh, n equals 2 level. And so that would be 2 in the s and then another 2 in the p, and that's how we get 2 and then 4. Um, if we go a little bit farther, let's look at aluminum. Here's the electron configuration for aluminum, and we can find it on the periodic table. 2 for that innermost uh, shell, n equals 1. Here's 8, so n equals 2 can hold 8 electrons total, and there they are. And so the last three are in the, in the n equals 3 shell. So that's why we have a 3 written there. So like I say, this is more for introductory chemistry, and this is the way that we would do it in general chemistry. Okay, so here is the periodic table with everything labeled. These are all the groups, and notice they're labeled from 1 to 18. Groups 1 and 2 and 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, those are no known as main group elements. And then these down here, 3 through 12, those are the transition metals. Okay? And so, so main group 1 and 2, and then all of these guys over here, 13 through 18, and then transition metals in the center. Also, just to point out, since we have it here, remember our nonmetals are up in this corner of the periodic table, so carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, all along there, and notice that light blue. That's giving us uh, information that those are all nonmetals. Uh, right along here, we have the semi-metals, okay? And so those are also called metalloids, and you could also think of them as the semiconductor metals, and, um, and they're kind of, they have properties of both metals and nonmetals, and so that's why they're shaded a little bit differently. Now, everything that is in this kind of tannish color, those are all metals, and you'll recognize a lot of those. So you recognize um, chromium as a metal. You recognize copper as a metal. Aluminum as a metal, okay? So there, iron. So there's, there's the recognizable elements there, but notice there's a whole bunch of metals on the periodic table. So everything from group one, aside from hydrogen, all the way, you know, once you get down below the metalloids, 13, 14, um, down to polonium, finally, in uh, group 16. So you can kind of see. So that's, so that just gives you a little bit more information there. Um, this, again, is in writing what I just said. So groups one and two and 13 through 18, their main group elements. Transition metals are three through 12. And um, those last two rows at the bottom of the periodic table, we're not going to deal with a lot in this class, but the top row, they're the lanthanides, and the bottom row, they're the actinides.